just talked to him about that. About, about we talk about motor transport. And we talk about the different. Uh, but I did tell him to go there. And I said no military branch, but the. Uh, you spend any time over in uh, in Korea? Oh heck no! I was between the wars. I was lucky. Oh man, it's a blessing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was right between. Them. Yeah, I was in. Uh, I was yeah, on the military. I'm on vacation. Uh, yeah, I mean, the <laughs> of course you did. I was in Osaka. Sixteen. No <laughs> it's a war zone. Yeah, yeah. I was there. Yeah, that's. That, that, that was, was the thing. Oh shit! Sure. I was there in uh, uh, '83. I was I was there three different times. Back home. Oh man, yeah, I had, man, I had, uh, I, I, I had a good time. And, uh, at one time, the area was restricted because they had, uh, they had a bunch of diseases. One, time, my last time over, I think they restricted certain areas of, uh, of, 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 of Korea. Now, have you ever been to the Philippines, the Black Man's Paradise? I have been. I didn't even go out. And oh man. Oh man. Yeah. It's called. But you've been. You've ever been there, uh, Mark? The Black mm. Man's Paradise. Mm -hmm. and I, have y'all heard that before, right? Have you ever heard that? Absolutely. I know you heard. Yeah. I have heard. Never heard that before. A, a hundred women do every man. And when I you that walk, was Atlanta. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> That's good said. Okay, I should go. Okay, turn, turn, um, remember to turn on this mic when you go high. Okay. Yeah, Speed right. up to the mic, friend. Talk into the microphone. Yes, sir. Because <laughs> I'm going to come out of I'm going to come out of this early, so we just, we'll have a lot of time. We can give Fred more time. Okay. okay. So, um, you ready, Fred? I'm ready. Thank you. Huh. Okay. I'm getting ready to go hot. Sunday morning to you. Welcome to Sunday Morning Perspective. Mark E. John G. John G. And also in the house we have Brother Fred Slack. Brother Fred, good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Doing great. <laughs> <Still early. laughs> yeah, I know it's early. Yes, but it we is. want to thank you for coming out. Yes, and, we do. Uh, accepting an invitation to come and talk uh, uh, to us for, uh, for a minute or two. Fred is... Um, um, one of our brothers, uh, Fred, is also a part of our men's group on Saturday, but he, he's a very interesting brother. He does a lot in the community. Uh, just, uh, Byron, just interview Fred. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Professor Slack and I have been associated for the past almost 15 years, and I've found him to be a, uh, a leader in the community. Uh, so I'd like to ask you, Reverend Slack, tell us what your greatest concerns are in this particular time uh, in our community? My greatest concern, which has been for a long time, is our black male, actually. Um, incarceration, um, the lack of a man in their lives, uh, the sexual prowess of our young people. I got a young man I'm working with right now, got four babies at 20 years old. And so those are my concerns of our community, um, not having the right perspective of reality uh, because of the fact they are doing things that are detrimental to them for the rest of their lives. And um, you got a whole lot of black males, as an example, who came through as, as teenagers and young men. Now they're in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and mm -hmm. they still cannot get it together. So those are my greatest concerns. So, so how can we, as uh, adult men in our community, how can we help the younger men uh, in our churches, in our schools, in our communities, in their home life? Well, one of the things I think we can do is, uh, we can't save the whole world, so what you can do is uh, brighten the corner where you are, if you have a young man, wow, like that, uh, that um, 
you are interested in or you can help, yes. I would say put yourself into, just get, get one man. You can't do it one. Just get one and have try to make them the best that they can be. Uh, you, like I say, you have to save the world. Just save that one. Did you, did you did you come up with that Brighton of yes, the Corner? Yes, yes. Brighton of the Corner, where you know, yeah. I heard that though. Oh, no, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm still there. Still there. <laughs> yeah, I'm first. I'm getting it first. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes. just tell, tell the people a little bit about what uh, yeah. uh, Fred The does. Reverend Fred Schlank, uh, degrees in psychology, sociology, theology, counseling, uh, still involved in education, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Pentecostal. Apostolic Church of uh, 60 years? No, I left years. the church. Uh, I left the Pentecostal okay. Church. I studied my way out. And okay. I'm not trying to get denominational, but okay. I studied my way out of the Pentecostal Church. Okay. And what I've, my, where I am now religiously is I don't try to follow anybody's denomination. Okay. Depending where I am, I go to the church where I feel is closer to where I am as a um, religious person. Uh, okay, yes, so I don't let anybody tell me, you know, based on what you did, what's in your uh, denomination. And we know so that's true. We know that's true. <laughs> 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 now, now uh, 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 Mr. Brother Reverend Fred Slack, <laughs> now, you are a, uh, a chaplain also? I'm a chaplain for the Juvenile Center and a chaplain for the uh, Indianapolis Police Department. Yeah. Okay, and vice and, president and business leader to, for the ministries of United uh, Bible Club. I have a class. I've okay. been there for a number of years with Byron. That's where I met Byron mm. at. And we clicked very quickly. Yeah. And I'm not the type of person that needs to have a title, so I okay. just went there to help out. And that's one of the things that stood out. When I first met you, uh, Brother Fred, uh, I was giving you a title and you pulled me aside and just said, man, this, you know, I'm just Brother Fred. I'm just <laughs> Brother. And I really, really appreciate that humility involved in that. And then I learned all the things that you were involved in. I was like, wow, this guy, you know, he's educated and uh, he's educated. He's been around. He's an older, uh, a seasoned brother. But I just really respected that humility involved. Now, uh, not too long ago, I also seen you, uh, saw you on TV. That was inadvertent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were co actually uh, counseling uh, a recent uh, murder, right. uh, suicide. That was a triple murder uh, on the um, mm -hmm. east side uh, where he was stuck. In fact, one of the young ladies that was killed had not been in an office over about a month and a half. And she came here to work and ended up on her way to work. Okay, and she was on her way to work. On her way to work. And um, just happened to come out, and there were other people that were in the hallway that somebody was uh, was going to kill, and they killed them. And since she was a witness, she was the one also that they got killed. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And uh, as I'm, I understand, they haven't even caught, caught the people yet at this point. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I had a question. I have... Quite a few retired uh, family members that do nothing in the community, in different communities around, because they live in different areas of mm -hmm. the country. What uh, motivates you or inspires you to stay connected and not to get thrown into this? Half of the commercials we see is about taking a pill, the other half is about retiring. Once yeah. you retire, it's all about me, 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 me. So, what makes you? not fall into this prey or fall into this systematic thinking that's about me, me, me. Well, I think, to tell you the truth, I think it's my calling from, from the beginning because ever since I was a young man, I have had that desire. Okay. You know, even mm -hmm. before I went to school, uh, even when I was in high school and in my regular school situation, uh, my, my mindset and my heart was for the community in mm -hmm. fact, as a kid, a little kid, I mean, I used to go to the old, older people in the neighborhood, buy them a little ice cream and things like that. So I think it's my calling okay. from you. Okay. Yeah. So you, you recognize early that would be your, kind of your purpose. Right. In fact, I thought, you know, in my naive days that I was going to have a van and everything, not a van, <laughs> but one of those uh, uh, SUVs or something, whatever, where you go around and the country and just okay. help people. Okay. <laughs> of course, I changed that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mobile outreach. <laughs> yeah. Amen. 
Reverend Slack, over the years I've seen you respond to the call when people are in need. I've seen you respond mm -hmm. to the call many, many times. In fact, uh, in one of our first meetings, I was I had just lost my job and I was struggling to get back on my feet and uh, you and your wife invite, invited me into your own home and you provided a, a source for some income for me. Uh, so you've always been a really, really strong mentor and a good friend. Uh, but what I want to really focus on is uh, your sons. You are a person or an individual, a man who has been uh, owner of his own business, but I noticed that each of your sons and daughters have had their own businesses over time. Can you give us a little bit of information on that? Yeah, I guess I've been an entrepreneur for ever since a young man, and um, my aim to be, in being an entrepreneur was to help the community uh, because I had a uh, passion for those who could not get jobs, such as those that were incarcerated. I've always worked with young people who were uh, incarcerated, couldn't find work at other places, okay. and so I started businesses to try to help them. and. Truthfully, it has not worked out for me as an individual because I find myself, uh, yeah. I, I hired so, so many ex-offenders and, and they were ex-offenders for a good reason. Yeah. <laughs> and, but you know, you don't give up just because um, people don't do like you uh, want them to do. In fact, my son, last week at the Juvenile Center, a couple weeks ago anyway, Mm -hmm. Young man um, got into it with each other, and uh, it looked like we were there for nothing, basically. And I told him after we left, I said, you might have helped one kid, so don't give up. Just because people don't react the way you think they ought to react, you just got to realize that you're not in there for the masses, you're in there for whoever. And it might not look like you're successful. And another thing I remember about that, I always keep on my forefront, is that God didn't call us to be successful. He called us to be faithful. So all we need to do is to continue to be faithful to God and let him make the change on the individual. Because you don't know what change you, you, you don't know what influence you have on the individual when you deal with them. So that's one thing that keeps me motivated, keeps me going. And... Um, and, and I'm, I'm stealing your stuff. That's true. God didn't call oh, us come, to be oh, successful. Can we share? I mean, we talk about sensitivity. <laughs> one, 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 can I just jump in real quick? One, one thing that, that you just said, and my, my spirit kind of jumped, uh, Brother Fred, I'm glad to hear you reiterate that. And, and I know from my own personal study, uh, my own personal life, I'm sorry, if, if I didn't have some men not give up on me in my life, right. uh, and, and I don't know about some of, some of you guys, but uh, I, I, I was, I was uh, I mean, let me see, growing up I was kind of hard-headed, stubborn, <laughs> out of control. Um, I think that if you looked at me then, you probably, a lot of people didn't want to deal with me. But I'm just so grateful I have some brothers like you. Uh, that kind of saw through the mess that I was at one time at a young, you know, at a young age, man. Because if it hadn't have been for those mentors, and you know, my, I've got uh, three brothers as well. But if it hadn't have been for some of those guys, um, there's no telling where I, where I would have been. So I appreciate hearing you say that. Yeah, well, I was raised in a bubble, a bubble of my own making, by the way, because uh, no one put me in that bubble. Raised in the Pentecostal church did not really realize what was going on in the world, you know. And a lot of people thought that there was something wrong with me. So because wrong of with the, you. Yeah, because of the sense of, because, you know, the toughness of the black male, <laughs> as an example. Okay. And I'm my old man of okay. Clark Kent, Kent okay. you know. Okay. But I wasn't. Sensitive. Nothing. Yeah, very good. And uh, people just thought, you know, there's something wrong with that kid. You know, he's not tough like the rest of us. But, wow. you know, <laughs> wow. but I was yeah. tough in my own way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gotcha. And in fact, my wife, um, we were working in an office in, in my hometown, mm -hmm. both my wife and myself working there. Mm -hmm. And I was a young man, construction company, a young man that was always coming in and messing with my wife, you know, you know how we talk wow. about some women. Mm -hmm. And I never said a word until my wife came and said, she don't like him talking to her like that. And once wow. she said that, I went on the field. I found my brother. <laughs> <laughs> and I 
said, no, you called me. He didn't call me Fred. My name's Fred. He didn't call me Fred. He called me Frida. In other words, you know, you kind of feel no wow. And so, you know, it didn't bother me. You can be talked to. You can tell me. I know who I am. Yeah. You know, that's the first thing. And uh, so I went to the field and I said, now you got Frida standing in front of you right now, man to man. Now you, you, you want it, you know. You know what I mean. Yeah, no. yeah, <laughs> Fortunately, he backed down. Start calling you Reverend Fighting Frisk. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of people come into my face, but God, God has always protected me yes, because yes. I'm not a fighter. I don't want to fight. Right, you know. right. And and you know, being a tough guy, this is this is something I try to tell my younger brothers too. Uh, my my whole interpretation of being a tough guy has changed over the years. Right. Uh, and you said something. It's it's you know, being a tough guy means being able to be yourself regardless absolutely. of what the culture is saying. Absolutely. You know, it mm -hmm. it has it's tough, mm -hmm. you know, being who you are. If you're quiet, uh, and it's also uh, one of the things I try to tell my, my, my nephews is that it's, it's really okay to be smart. Mm -hmm. It is really okay to be smart. Mm -hmm. Somehow mm -hmm. or another in our culture, it's right. all changed to where you have to be a thug and you right. have to be in order to be cool and you know you know what being cool is is being smart that's being exactly. cool really exactly. uh and, and so you know so that's a tough guy another thing that's changed over the years as far as being a tough guy uh tough guys are responsible mm. tough guys are productive right. mm -hmm. tough guys are there for their family that's right. tough guys are there for that's their right. village that's a right. tough guy that's right. that's exactly tough right. tough guys go to work every day mm -hmm. and take life as it comes and comes home and takes care of their uh, uh, their responsibilities yeah. yes. and, and speaking of tough guys mark I can remember about seven eight years ago uh, Reverend Slack uh, and I were involved in a situation and it had to do with the church and we were trying to get some work done at the church and a mm -hmm. particular individual uh, had done so many things. He had sent emails to our family. I know. Oh, you right? go ahead with it. He had <laughs> disrespected us face to face. I mean, he, anything that you wow, can think of man. that would make you feel sensitive, this man had done it. He was big in stature. He was a big guy. And I tell you, toward the very end, I, I, I was at the point, and, and I'm not where I am now in my walk with God. I was mm -hmm. thinking about taking a two by four and, and, and just walking out and introducing him to it. And Reverend Slack said, no, no, that's not, what, that's not the way that God wants us to handle the situation. Yeah. That was a turning point in my life because mm -hmm. I really am a quiet person, but yeah. you can push me to the limits yes. where I'm looking over the edge, and <laughs> I was there. So uh, I thank God for uh, Reverend Slack allowing him to speak to my heart and to redirect me. And, and, bro and Brother Fred, uh, do this for us, because in the spirit of conflict resolution amongst our brothers, what would you say is one of the most needed things today? I think, like I was at the Juvenile Center last night, um, one of the things we need to do, like I told the kids, is before you react, you know, just like if you have a gun, you don't put a bullet in one chamber. Mm. Okay. So you can, you don't react. You know, if you react, you got a safety mm -hmm. situation. Okay. So I tell kids not to to think before you react in the world. Okay. You know, okay. So a lot of times uh, we need to just start to think about what we're doing before we react, and think, not only think about what you're doing, but think about the consequences, the consequences of right what now. you're doing. In fact, the other day, just about a day or two ago, uh, I was in the the alley of the house where I'm working on because I'm moving back to the ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean by the ghetto? <laughs> what I mean by that actually is um, the ghetto is not a, by the way, it's, it's not a location. The ghetto is a mindset. <laughs> okay. yes, yes. So I don't care where you live, you can be in the ghetto. Okay? <laughs> so, but I, but what we call the ghetto is, you know, where in those places where the houses are not that great and everything. Yeah. And I have a problem with, what I have a problem with is our preachers, to tell you the truth, that we have our churches. We're going to get a lot of calls. We're going to get a lot of calls. <laughs> but our churches are in the, what we call the inner city, I just say inner city. Uh -huh. And our preachers, we put them out in Zionsville and Carmel and everywhere. I think if we're going to be a part of the community, we need to be a part of the community. Amen. And that's one reason my son and I chose 
to say we mo I moved from Castleton. Amen. And my son moved from ways um, west. Amen. To move back to the inner city where we can be more effective. I'm not telling you something about I like uh, that. Um, that I'm for you. I'm saying I'm for you and I'm here with you. Oh, okay. Amen. And that's what we need to be doing more of. And I know we want to stay out there in the suburbs because what's happening in our community is that white folks are not running from us as much as blacks are running from blacks. Amen. Okay. We're Amen. running from each other. So Amen. we need to come together. That's I don't think I answered your question that you asked. No, no, that was, that, that was actually perfect. I, I appreciate that. John, you got Yes, that? that's, that is uh, profound about moving uh, back and taking inner city and, and helping the, mm -hmm. the young brothers and sisters uh, out. But now what about, because I've been through this. I'm from Gary, and I went through it with ministers and pastors and preachers and city council members and, and on and on on. What's, what if a person has young children? Because I was actually on your, I mean, not that I, I was. I speaking, understand exactly Yes, because yes, yes, exactly. I was on your, I'm, I was saying the same thing. <laughs> I was a young, militant, uh, newly uh, de, uh, designed Christian, and I was on all these cats back yeah. in Gary. So why are y'all moving out? Uh, some didn't have children, but what if you have small children and you're moving back? To the ghetto. I mean, what's your, I mean, what's your perspective? Okay, I'm glad you asked that question because that is when I first came to Indiana, I moved to the inner city. I was just say now, okay. and I had young children. And uh, when I moved there, the atmosphere I couldn't let my kids out the house. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the atmosphere was not conducive to the kids being there. Mm -hmm. My kids being there. Mm -hmm. So yes, if you have young children, you have to live in a safe environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and so that therefore I say with young children, my son has young children, mm -hmm. but he's not in quite a bad area where he has to worry about that. Mm -hmm. But yes, I think at some time when you have young children, you can't do like someone like me who's retired don't have young children. Now my wife is still apprehensive mm -hmm. about going back, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and I and I do think about her safety. You know, you know, one of the things that breaks my heart about. Uh, moving out into the the outskirts. You know, it kind of feels like we've abandoned some of the good people right. uh, mm -hmm. and left them to kind of fend for fend themselves. For themselves. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, one of the things, you know, because I, I'm always in the community, I do a lot of outreach and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I'm always in the community. But uh, one of the insp inspirational things about that is that there are still a lot of families that's been in these neighborhoods for generations. A lot of good people, yeah. and I'm always and I'm always reminded of that saying. You know, in order for for evil to triumph, all it takes is for good people to do nothing. Right. So a lot of us good people, I, I I applaud you. A lot of us good people need to remember and move back to help to rebuild our neighborhoods Absolutely. and to protect some of the people that's been holding it down, some of the good people that's been holding mm -hmm. it down in these neighborhoods. Maybe we can band together right. for that safety. And actually, absolutely, that's exactly what's happening right now mm -hmm. uh, in the neighborhood I am in. And when I first moved over to, or was working, I'm still working on it. Okay. On the area where that I moved in, the first thing I did was to go and clean up the neighborhood. Okay. You know, get all the trash out. Neighbors come out and say, well, it's, it's for naught mm -hmm. because they're just going to mess it up. Because drug dealers right down the street, okay. and, uh, mm -hmm. they have they accumulate and they mess up a lot of stuff. But I decided to keep cleaning up. They mess up, I clean up. They mess up, I clean up. Until they saw the difference. Mm -hmm. And when they still saw the difference, the neighborhood changed just from that. Mm -hmm. They started cleaning up. Okay. You know, yeah. Other people started cleaning up. And, you know, mm -hmm. at this point... Uh, we are making a difference just on that little, that one little area. And so once we start from there, we just build on. And I go to the neighbors and we talk. You know, mm -hmm. I treat everybody the same. You know, yeah. you're no different from me. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I treat the drug dealers like, you know, anybody else. Yeah. And we talk yeah. and everything. Yeah. And uh, they find out I'm a... For these chaps, they see the badge they don't cop. They're going to be your friend. <laughs> well, drug, anyway, friend. Drug, de drug dealers need Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And that's what I was trying to try. Actually, there's a building in the neighborhood that uh, several preachers in the, in the city was trying to get to make a difference to come together mm -hmm. on Sunday and um, just 
evangelize the neighborhood or something. Because okay. uh, talk to people, you know, I'm more or less, I'm not churchy to tell you. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather be out there talking to John and Joe and all these other folk. Amen. Because we, we can sit in church and tell each other how holy we are. But we need to yeah. Watch out. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> you got to those walls. You're right. Yeah. That's out the walls and try doing some stuff. Yes, sir. John and Byron. Yes, that's. Uh, now, how do we get people like you? Uh, again, I, I'm just being honest. We've got nine members of the family, all ages from 50 to about 70. Mm-hmm. How do we get them inspired? Because, because you know, because I'm talking about Christians. Yeah. Uh, how mm-hmm. do we get them inspired to? We, we know you're retired and all this, but how do we inspire them? Because they, we're talking about a huge segment of our, uh, our black population that that have something in them that they can pour out into young people. Mm-hmm. How do we get them out there? That's a hard question because of the fact that I think some people are called to do certain things. Amen. And some people don't supposed to be out there. <laughs> okay, Amen. if you understand what I mean. Yes. There's yeah. a different calling for different people. And so I, I, so I just true. try to tell people to find the space where they're supposed to be, the place where they're supposed to be. You know, I don't try to say come out there with me and do the things I'm doing. I say do what God Told you, told you to do. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is me getting upset man. with you because you're not out there with me. Amen. God didn't tell you about come out there with me. <laughs> okay. My brother Slack, they're doing nothing. They're doing nothing. Oh, yes. And unfortunately, right. my right. friend, right. that is most of the Christian. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. And so okay. what you have to do, 10% of the people do 90% of the work in the church. Okay. So uh, what you can do is just keep that's what you, the preacher is for. That's what the church is for. Mm-hmm. The preacher, the, the pastor is supposed to be inspiring people. And the inspiration of the pastor talking to his congregation, mm-hmm. that's about as much as he can do. Mm-hmm. Now, job. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like I know that you are in strongly involved in the community. Uh, can you suggest some areas that uh, a person that wanted to, to contribute to society, mm-hmm. how they could reach out? Some volunteer agencies, some yeah. agencies mm-hmm. that need uh, older, mature, wise folk to help them out. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, yes, yes. There's a lot of them. In fact, uh, like my friend Albert Rose, he knows what I'm talking about. He was always going to a uh, grade school and just okay. being, you know, mm-hmm. talking to the kids and things mm-hmm. like that. So uh, a lot of elderly people that cannot do a lot, but you can got wisdom, you got understanding, you went been through stuff, you can just sit and talk to classes of kids, and you can just, like I say, I want everybody to have at least one person, one person to have to sit and, and uh, not only talk to, uh-huh. but be an inspiration in their lives. So there's just so much we can do. And uh, when I was in school, uh, I used to, uh, in uh, dealing with kids. What I used to do with uh, the kids that acted up, I stopped sending them to discipline because mm-hmm. these kids have a whole lot of problems. I try to send them to social workers. Unfortunately, we don't have enough to mm-hmm. deal, deal with that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Brother Fred, we really want to just, you know, thank you for, for hanging out with yes, us thank this you. morning. Um, it's been truly a blessing. Will you come back sometime? Anytime, I got a lot of people I can get you to come back to. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. And uh, we want to thank you all for joining in to uh, Sunday Morning Perspective, SMP3 with Mark E, Byron G, and John G. Uh, remember that next week uh, we have Jay and Marv in the studio for our interview. Also coming up at 2 p.m. today, Words from the Well with Greg Merriweather. Uh, you're listening to the Black on Black dot network, and also on Tuesdays you can catch Greg um, Greg's show on Tuesdays from two to four as well. So again, we just want to thank you for tuning in, brother Fred. We want to thank you. Thank again you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, uh, Byron, John. We are about out of here. What do you say? Peace. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> God bless. Thank you again. You're listening to Black on Black Network with Sunday Morning Perspective. Have a great day. Uh, Ooh. All right. Perfect. Good job, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> uh,
Chaplain, well, he, he's, he's not there. He's a chaplain at uh, juvenile. Yeah, center. Mm -hmm. you, you probably know Johnson. Yeah. He's yeah. a chaplain for coaching. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. A lot of the chaplains in juvenile center keep coming in and out. Correct, correct, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that was great, okay. and I didn't know that this was your your, your brother's the studio. That's why I'm shutting Rams. my mouth. Yeah, I'm shutting my mouth about that change. Uh, support your brother. Yeah, support your brother, man. <coughs> when you were saying a few of the things that you were saying is is you know Greg talks about it all the time, man. But you know moving moving yeah. into some black supporting black businesses. Yeah, yeah. Man. Moving back to the neighborhoods. And, okay. That's why the pastors were upset at me, and that was one of my uh, so points when I was. Then, then I got a different perspective because, like mm -hmm. you said, with the children deal, a lot of them, a lot of them don't have children, or the children have grown. Yeah. And so, yeah. So uh, I came. I, I had to. You know, I had to kind of. Taylor. Yeah, Taylor. Uh, yeah. To. Uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I had to move out. When I right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My children. Church of Christ. Yeah. yeah. That that's because a big thing. Because I couldn't thing. Have come across. No, that. no. I, I've been. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It's, uh, that's why we moved from there. Mm -hmm. We were living on 4 and 9, basically, the ghetto. And yeah, and yeah. people moved from yep, 2000, 20, uh, 2000 because you had the children uh, and moved to Castleton. That's mm -hmm. the reason we moved, right. Mm -hmm. But but what we thought education was going to be better, but it's really not because the problem is you got people that don't know you yeah. that are teaching your children. You know, now you know, and then you're not there, you're not visible. So, so, so it becomes kind of a double-edged sword. You know, mm -hmm. you can live in the ghetto and deal with those problems, and, but you can sit in your schools where the, the white folks just don't, I mean, they don't, man, they don't have the white teachers. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get you get my daughter here. Um, she's a little piece. She'll be through with law school after this year. Oh, what school is she going to? She's going to um, Lincoln Tech. Okay. In, in uh, Fort Wayne. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, that was one of the, we, I, when I recruited officers, we, went to, we had four law schools, because the, uh, the Marines have a very, very good law program for the guys that want to go in and be uh, lawyers. Oh, yeah, believe me, one of the best. You come in, and actually, uh, after you come from your six months of training, of uh, TBS, as they call it, uh, within a year, you're a captain. Yeah. yeah, because they count that three years of uh, law school. They kind of, yeah, so the Marines said, oh man, so we, yeah, so we had a great law program. So, yeah. So, the only thing I had to do with the Marines, I went to Camp Pendleton. Oh, Pendleton, oh man, yeah. that's the best. <laughs> that's the best. Boy. Looking at all that training, them boys 